before I start splitting that top patty, I'm going to make some changes to fix some errors that I noticed in my silhouette when compared to the real reference. So one initial thing that I'm noticing is that I'm a little too tall. That does also have something to do with the fact that uh, in ZBrush, this camera view is simulating sort of like a 35 millimeter camera. And as I mentioned in my first lesson, this original reference has what I called a, a narrow field of view, it has less perspective. So we're seeing more of the sides. So I want to be careful not to flatten it too much here because I would be doing it in a sort of a view that's simulating a wider FOV. For now, I'm going to make a, a little bit of a change to that and see what impact it has. So I'm going to grab, I don't want to do it to the bun. I'm going to take this bun, hold down shift, take it to the top. I don't want to touch it. And also with these pickles, I'm going to take them to the top. And I'm going to hide all of this. Then with everything that's in view, I'm going to go Z plugin, uh, transpose master and go T pose mesh. Then I'm going to go scale. I'm going to center it to the base and flatten it just a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to go Z plug in, T plus subtract. Okay. So it gets shorter, turn these guys back on and move them into position. closer to the height. The height was definitely a little bit too short. Some other changes I'm going to make. I noticed that this part, I have it a little bit too close to the front side. It's maybe a little bit more on that side. And then this top cheese here is draping over the top patty, the cheese and the sauce are dripping over a little bit more. So I undershot that too. Another thing I undershot is I have to use visual plumb lines because this cheese is a lot more underneath this um, cucumber. It's right up underneath it a lot more. So I'm going to move this to the side and also move the sauce to the side so that it's about close to about the halfway point, not all the way there, but close. Another thing that I made a mistake with is this indent it is a lot more uh there's a lot more of an indent i undershot how much it it is impacting the front so i'm going to another thing i i missed is that there's a lot more of a dip here to accommodate uh, the patty, so the patty comes down about that much more. Yeah, there's more of a dip there. This is all going to be sauce. Another mistake I made is that I represented this as a indent and it's not the case. It's I made some slower changes and I ended up pushing that in. That is not an indent. Another thing I have to do is rotate this bun a little bit more because it's not. Let me rotate. Rotate this bun a lot more. And another thing I messed up was there's a stair stepping effect here that I've missed. And it just might be fixed by simply moving this button a little bit more out so we have more of that stair stepping effect. I might also have over exaggerated the height of this uh, bun. Okay. okay, so now it's time to split this top patty. I had a long discussion about this at the end of the last lesson. I'm gonna split it up so I can pump more detail into the separate sections. 
So to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is go to render, turn on live boolean. Now I'm going to create the separate divisions that I'm going to need for this patty with the help of other shapes. So I'm going to append a sphere to start off with. Scale it down. And let me hide everything else. I'm going to put all this stuff in a new folder. Okay, so I just leave these two like that. Okay. So from the front view, I have an initial to be the first that's not close enough this is going to be the first chunk I'm going to use live booleans to get these chunks out of there it's going to be like a union operation I'm go too far into the center so I can only have a little piece I'm going to duplicate this and move the cursor to the center and focus on this chunk. And then I'm going to duplicate it yet again. Focus on the third chunk back there. I think from the front view, duplicate that. Rotate it to get the next chunk. Now for the back side, I said I was going to extend this all the way to the other side. I'm going to duplicate that and rotate it to get this chunk. Duplicate it again. This is a very important chunk. I want piece. Duplicate, rotate it again to get that chunk, and then we just have one, two more actually. So I get the move tool, and then I duplicate it again, and rotate to get the last chunk. Well, there is one more. I should stop saying last. How about that much? Now, the last chunk is this central region, and for that, I'm going to use a cylinder. Right, this will be the least detailed area. I'm going to take this divided a few times, delete lower, and scale it down. It can overlap a little bit, that's fine. Scale down. I'm going to deal with these one by one. So I'm going to create a folder. This is how I usually like to do my booleans. And I'm going to put the first chunk in there. I'm going to duplicate this piece a few times to end up with the amount that I need. So I need roughly one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, how about ten. So I'm going to go. Duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. Let's get a few and start pairing them with the piece that I'm going to be booleaning with. So I create a folder. It's the last central piece. Get it up underneath its piece. Go new folder. Dump that in here. We don't need this piece. Okay, so that's everybody that I want to perform a Boolean on in its own folder. I'm going to hide them and we'll go down the list and perform these Boolean operations.
So the first one, the first one is this one. I want to perform a unification. So a unification gives me the chunk I'm looking for. And I can go down here to the Boolean and say make Boolean mesh. And I should be able to now append that mesh. to the next one. So I want a unification. I can hide this temporarily. For a unification, I'm going to go make Boolean. I should create that piece. Go append and add it to the shot. I can hide it and move on to the next group. Select this, go unification. This is supposed to be hidden. So we have that piece. I say make Boolean. I can now append it. And there it is. I'm going to hide it. Move on to the next chunk. Hide this group. We have three more. This is our central piece. I'll do it now. So, same thing unify. We get that central piece. This piece is going to have the lowest amount of resolution. You can hide it. We have two more. Unify. Make Boolean. And okay. Hide that. And we have one more. Make Boolean. Append it. Okay. So that's it. Boolean 9. Rename. Boolean 10. Okay. So that's them. We're done with these Boolean folders. I'm going to turn on my folder with my burger, move it to the bottom, and turn on all my chunks so we can start finessing their silhouettes with the main piece. Okay, so those are all the individual chunks. I'll go back to my front view. I'm going to do a little bit of a smoothing for some of them just to be able to separate them. And focus and start shaping them. Actually, let me hide this group temporarily so I can just see them and adjust them. First, I'm going to use a general smooth operation under deformation just to give them a little, little bit of smoothing. Take this main piece here and start moving it back so that it only occupies the region it's supposed to represent. This, as I mentioned, would be the lowest resolution because it's in the center. The detail, it, it won't necessarily be low, but it won't have as many peaks and valleys. Uh, this will make for an easier detailing and a simpler map if the detail is just surface level. The ones on the outskirts, they're going to have a lot of peaks and valleys and they will better approximate the shapes that are being shown in the reference. This will truly have like a simpler paddy feel. but. I shouldn't say it will be void of detail. It will still have 
a good amount of detail just since the shape is a lot simpler it won't be costly okay now I'm going to turn this stuff back on I mean I can slowly start shaping these so this first piece here has more of a it's making more of a there's a more of an ankle it's leaning I'm gonna get my trim dynamic brush make it stronger and shave away to get that angle and as I mentioned previously is like this when all these pieces are detailed it will make the occluded areas richer they'll have so much they'll interact so much better with lighting because it will truly be a crevice so there'll be no faking it will actually try to simulate that crevice make my move brush a little stronger so i'm slowly getting these Okay, so that's that triangle shape. I think it's kind of achieved. Now we get over here to these outskirts. It also has that, as I can see, there's this like curve. I'm gonna try to get it. And this is more invading the top region and we'll have more of a shape like that. As we move towards the outskirts, I'm gonna have to invent for the sides, but for the back, I might as well get the back. Well, on this side too, I have enough information. So this one here is more, more of an attention. It also has like a peak up top. And this one, I can just shave it. I can just, from this point on, I'll have to do some invention on the sides. Before I start inventing what angles I'm going to use on this side based off of what's happening here, I'm going to pick how the side is going to move. I want to get the back because the back, so that one, this is also at an angle. I really have to start considering how this split is going to work. Okay, ultimately, what I need is an angle. So I'm going to move this until I get the bottom half is that's less this one is rounder let me start using the build up brush to get that round shape but it's also at an angle like this so that should suffice for now we really have to think about how this top bun how it's invading the back side and perhaps the way I can truly accommodate this crevice, which I really want to happen, is to bring this a lot lower so I can get more room for this uh, coveted shape that I've been I've, I've, I'm aspiring to achieve. That is inside, and this is more mountainous, and there's like a crevice in there, yeah. Okay, and I'll come back and do some more shaping on this. But now I'm going to invent some angles for the side based off of what I have. So it's obviously using very, uh, when you look at the real reference, you're getting a lot of like really nice angles. So I'm going to try to replicate them for this side where. Everything is almost an invention. Okay. This is a particularly good area to get a nice little angle like that. And shave it off. And then here, I'm going to open up the angle. Like that. 
this. Okay, so that seems to work. But I gotta be careful because this is actually, I do have information for that, so. All right, so this is protruding a bit too much. Let me move it in. Okay, now the other side, this is also invention. I'm going to go with uh, something different. I'm gonna go with an upward, a more, a more uh, standing up triangle for this uh, prominent piece in the center. So still have those a triangular look. Let's trim dynamic to shave. And that's it. This one will be more like that. Yeah, I really have to start processing how I'm gonna deal with this top bun so that it doesn't clash. I'm caught between trying to replicate the angle of the front and At the same time, trying to do something new with a patty, so. I just have to accept the fact that these are going to be a lot lower. Stop trying to make them poke out like the front. They just simply can't do that. So I'll just keep moving this down. Okay, for this back side here, I think we can do a good job of letting this drape. It's feeling a little upright. This cheese is supposed to be acting like it's pouring down, so it's a better shape for the back. Okay, this piece is a lot larger a little bit more space Not more than that yeah. Not that much and this lower part definitely protrudes a little bit more than that okay so there you have it I'm going to hide this yet again and check this these areas here, start shaving them down. I'm not gonna be this prominent. Powerful brush. blended well for it to look like a singular piece so a lot of work will be done to make sure that just in case whoever is using this you know wants to be able to present this as a singular burger the detail will be blended really well so that it can appear that way for a singular patty even use some more of a transitionary mesh if it's necessary I don't think it is I think it'll do a lot of work I'll do a lot of work to make sure that it reads as one piece there's so much tertiary detail on here that it'll just look unified so 
Uh, that's it for the splitting of the top patty. Adjustment of this top bun, it's gonna be adjusted a lot. Um, how I ended up with be careful about the volume of this sauce it's not that I turn this on make sure I'm doing the right things and also how much forward these this thing is definitely underrepresenting it stop rotating it because it's impacting the back rotated in that fashion and this is a lot more rotated down than I thought all right I'm gonna check the side to see if it's one one thing that's prominent from the front and the back is how it's either a stair-stepping effect that makes it look good. So I'm gonna bring this a little bit more forward. Check the other side to see we also have that sort of step down. Very cool stair stepping effect. Now when it comes to the lower bun, it's mostly covered in cheese. Not as much of it is going to be showing, so it doesn't need to be split up in as many pieces as this. I'm just gonna split it up into four pieces just to help me get smaller pieces to dedicate a lot more geometry to because I don't want it to look completely mismatched as far as the detail is concerned from the top one for the little that is showing but we don't need as many pieces up top okay so I didn't want to make you watch me splitting the bottom patty as I mentioned it's not gonna have as much detail so the way I split it is I split it into four chunks so I'm going to show you how I accomplish that I just use four quadrants so the same way I did the top patty I use four quadrants and I did a union a boolean union to get four chunks one thing I want to start doing is getting the primary forms of the bottom button and the reason why I want to do this is because I want to get the sauce I want to be able to block out the sauce mesh so this is sort of like the first phase of the primary forms block out, or at least forms that are just a little bit more detailed than the silhouette and these other sort of more secondary silhouette shapes that I've been focusing on. So what I'm about to do will count as phase of detailing that is sort of just a little bit farther ahead than what I've done by splitting this bun. So I'm gonna start doing that by Using the Damien standard brush, I'm going to start trying to get this collapsing effect. Pay close attention to it. It's a collapsing effect. Push a little farther. It comes all the way down here. And there is a lot of interesting forms going on here. One which, so right to the side of where this cheese is supposed to be, there is a, an indent, a complete collapsing over here. You first hint at it by pushing it in. Move brush. Yeah, that's about it. There's going to be a lot of a fluid mesh somewhere there. And I think that would suffice. Towards here, there is sort of another push here. Now, a lot of this is going to be sauce but I do have to start trying to imagine what a 
is sitting underneath. So this part swing up like this. Swinging up. There's a whole lot of sauce there. And definitely an indent. Make sure these build up too. It's always good that there's less information to work with as far as geometry is concerned. Stops you from going a little bit too far. So start to do some of these shapes that I'm seeing. And the objective here is to think secondary, sorry, to think primary forms, not pushing any further than that. And do the same thing with the back because we have that. And then I'll show you how I'm going to resolve the sides. It's also a collapsing shape that starts from here, sort of collapses. Is a larger and then there is somewhat of a another collapsing shape but separated by somewhat of a mound and it just goes underneath here up slightly there's a lot of interesting details happening there don't worry about them too much right now focus on building up this region there's also another indent here form this is where it blends into the side so there'll be I'll go over there and figure out how to invent there I haven't done a good job defining how this cheese is gonna look so it's confusing me a little bit but I'm going to put in this split there's a split there makes it more complicated shape, which I'll hint at. There is another complex shape here. I'm gonna start putting all that in. Shave in to get this. And what I'm seeing is definitely some, this is definitely gonna be its own form. So I'm gonna be careful with how far I push this. I'm not trying to jump into the secondary forms phase just yet. So I think this also has a, feels like it's a form that's protruding just a little bit more over here. I'll use that to separate from this. This is also, let me start building some of these forms. Just sort of like a zigzag spot. Brush. I'm seeing places where there appear to be differences based off of the way the light is hitting it. This is so very moundy. Get that. Separation there is 
characterized by this sort of also want to put for here because I know it's all covered in sauce I will have to do some invention based off of what I'm seeing already so to, to create some cohesion at this primary form stage you'll see me sort of coming up with a little bit of what I think is underneath um, this is will happen even more so when I get to the secondary and tertiary forms it's going to be a whole bunch of invented detail and well I'll take as much as I can from the reference when I zoom into it but it's not going to be enough so a lot of invention will have to be done let me find my ground plane I want to make sure that this little indent which really is supposed to be it has more like a square like a doorway feel to it and there's like a form here which is really sauce but Once I get the sauce in, I'll rest easy. Okay, for the sides, as I told you, well, there's not that much to invent. I feel like for this particular side, it seems to be a fair amount of work to do. But I think for this side, I showed you the reference I was going to use to help me get the bottom, the collapsing lines of the bottom bun and this was the one main one i was going to rely on but there is another one right on top of it that has some really cool detail so for the this area where i'm having i don't have uh, enough information from the front and the back i am definitely going to use this over here i'm going to try to get this detail because this is very interesting very cool I'm gonna get it up on the screen and I'll have it on the side of my screen here and get it in so that'll go here and on the other side I think here I can invent because it's just a little portion that has to be filled in and I think I can figure out how it's gonna work perhaps I might even leave it a little bit more bare just so that there is a good amount of detail contrast because this looks like it's going to be really busy all through here. So I'll make sure this is not too busy and there's a lot more source maybe covering it over here. Just want to make sure it doesn't all just look collapsed and crazy. It'll just be too much detail. All right, let me go in here and try to get what I'm seeing in the reference here. So here also, there is a collapsing that travels like that is definitely a moundy feel here I want to get in there and this is also gonna have that there's a lot more detail going on there there's this like really cool folding effect that I'm gonna start hinting at it's really cool detail, very cool. And then there's, I'm gonna hold in my Damien standard and, and pull out some too. Yeah, and then there's two tiers of detail there. I could probably just it's a lot of detail there. I'm gonna just treat it as one block for now. And uh, I'm gonna to come to it later. When we're dealing with other forms, so I can deal with it. And I'm going to have to accept how it's blending into the back here. Sorry, the front, how it's coming from the front. 
So I'm just pretty much taking just this portion. I'll leave this alone because this blends into mine. So I'm just taking this, this little piece here. Right, so over here, it does this very interesting. shape like that and there's like a huge indent there and this is definitely an indent and build this form up a little bit more and it's a good starting point and this is also built and it goes into a larger form, which is great. I think I have, it blends nicely into the detail we established for the back. All right, so I think that's gonna be good. There's a lot more lines here, but I won't bother too much. I just don't have enough detail to put them in. I'll just hint at them. As, as always, it's good that can't push any further because you just don't have enough information. And there's a lot of uh, creasing detail here. But so so far, this is what's gonna work. Now, I'll admit, I'm doing a lot of experimentation with this project this time around. In the past, I have a different way that I approached this bottom bun. I have like a formula that I used to do a bottom bun. But this time, I want to try to really capture what I'm seeing. And I might use some of those techniques from my previous projects, but I want to make sure at least for the silhouette and the primary forms, I am matching exactly what I'm seeing here. And then the objective is to use the secondary and tertiary forms as a stage to do a lot of invention and to make this asset so much richer so that it looks just like the way it looks in the reference when you're looking at it from this distance. And then when you zoom in and start tumbling the asset, you see some super refined detail, a lot like what we're seeing in the reference and even more that accentuate it. But the detail I'm going to invent should not obliterate any of what the reference is giving us. So that's going to be a challenge in itself. All right, so this is the first pass at this lower bun. Now I have something that's fairly echoing what my bun detail is gonna look like. I'm gonna extract a mesh that is going to represent this sauce and start blocking it out. Okay, so that's next. Okay, before I extract the sauce, I'm going to fix the cheese on the back here. I realize I've, I was completely off, especially if I'm going to go with a bun the way it looks. A lot of this mass here, or this cheese, this is all the way on, almost past the center line. So all this detail. I'm grab my topological mask. So all this detail is kind of all the way here. I don't know how I completely missed it. It's all the way here, where this um, little bit of detail is, is where that hook is supposed to be so it's like there and there's a whole bunch of information that really should be coming out of here i'm going to inflate this a little bit just to give me some more geometry to work with and inflate that too kind of getting like a shortened version of it but i still want to come as close as possible to getting something that's remotely close enough. And then have like a stair stepping effect. To transition into this larger mass, which is bleeding onto the burger, onto the bun. And then this mass here, this really interesting detail it's closer to the front. So I'm looking at it from the back. We can see this cavernous part of it 
there's like this cavern in there okay and that should be close enough and then let me get the other side of it which is just really lacking i'm gonna soften this that's really wrong so there's this big mass here i'm gonna soften this too so there's only one separate uh, somewhat of a triangle separating it and it is this mass pouring and then it goes up here where it should be draping over and then at the top of the bun it's doing a whole bunch of interesting stuff which i will get later because that's too small of a detail to try to capture but it is let me make sure Looks like I'm gonna have to pull it out to get that bit of information over there. So it's like that. And I'll try to get that little piece. Probably won't show too well, but it's good to try to get that little hook that's just sitting there. All right, so this is just a better block out. Just so it helps me to better gauge all the sauce that's coming. I want to make sure I'm lining things up correctly. So that's about it. And another thing that I do want to fix that, I want to make sure that this actually shows a complete inset over there. This is a more crescent shape. I don't have enough detail to define it just yet, but it's good to start. Okay. All right, so now we're ready to try to get that sauce in. And this, I should probably let it match the detail a little bit better. So I'm gonna finish up this lesson by blocking in the sauce. I'm gonna select the lower bun, and I'm gonna duplicate it and go down, hold shift to take it to the bottom, solo it, and I'm gonna subdivide it a few times, turn off Dynamesh, and subdivide it a few times just to get enough resolution to mask out the sauce. Then I'm gonna go delete lower, and high res lower bun for sauce extraction. And let me just make sure that I lower bun primary detail. Check this one. Okay. I'm gonna hide this temporarily. This lower bun. Turn it back on shortly. For now, I'm gonna go like that and start masking the sauce. So, in this central region, I'm gonna mask. So it's going to be on most of the inside here. So I'll start there, getting most of the inside. Now I'll start getting the edges. So I'm just interested in the parts where it's so thick that the bun doesn't show through. So I'm gonna get, so this is one of them areas, it has like a triangular feel. There's another one there. And Don't worry about getting it too perfect now because as soon as it comes in, I can shape it. But 
I'll try not to end up with too many isolated islands. Uh, another thing to, I want to remind is of is that this is eventually going to be welded to the bun. But at this stage where I want to detail it individually, detail it on its own, it's going to be its own piece. And there's another part of it, it's the most prominent part. It's probably going to be the most detailed version of it, or the thickest version of it. So that's pretty much it for the front side. That's as much of it as I'm going to get. I think I got all the pieces. So the side, I'm going to do some invention. I'm going to sort of use the same logic. Here is a good opportunity to have a lot more sauce covering this because it's going to be plain, a lot plainer. I'm also going to do some things that break up the detail a bit. Oh, I forgot a particular part of the front that I do want to extract sauce for. It's this, like this part that's inside the the collapse detail okay so now here I'm gonna do a whole bunch of invention try to come up with something that mimics what's happening in the front and almost respects the form that is already there so So that to me is good. And in the end, when I weld it, a lot of the, uh, I'm going to do a little bit more, a lot more sculpting to blend the sauce into the bread. So there'll be additional pieces of sauce sculpted onto the bread. And when it comes time to shade it, I will make sure to extend the properties of the sauce to certain parts of the bread so that I get better blending. Cause this thing really has to blend well. All right, that's the biggest challenge for this iteration of food sculpting that I'm doing. I really want these things to blend very well. I'm gonna take an opportunity over here to have the sauce streaming all the way down because this is a transitionary point. This is where the detail uh, is from several different references. So I'm going to have the sauce completely fill that area. And this, I might have made some bad design choices because it just looks so evenly distributed and I don't want that. So I just want better shapes. It's a better shape. And for an area like this, it wouldn't hurt to. Okay. Right, that looks good. And then for this side, I'm gonna go with some more crescent shapes. See if that's good. Yep, that's gonna work. So I look all the way around, it's all interesting detail. Black is really cool. And some additional islands. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Just to simplify things and make sure that look at the front, none of the corner of the lower bun is showing, so I might as well just have this uh, have the same thing the whole way around. 
get the simpler mesh to work with. Okay, so that's completely filled in. So, all right. So now it's time to extract it. It will extract. That is too much, so we'll go 0 0.002, extract. That's pretty good, but I can go a little bit higher, 0 0.004. And I'll accept that. And before I start, before I get rid of the mask that it comes with, I'm gonna run a smooth operation and get the edges in order. And now I'm going to remove that and get my smooth brush and just go around, give it the general smooth. Even some of this extracted source detail will have to have certain regions that have shading properties of the bun because in some areas, if you look close enough, you can see the bun underneath some of these thick areas. And also it'll have shading properties of the liquidated cheese that's on top of it that looks white. So yeah, this will this thing will be shaded in substance painter to have several different properties, several different subs, uh, subsurface properties, roughness properties, and also have different uh, base color properties and whatever sh other shaders I use. Okay, I'm going to start getting some of these crescent shapes that this thing has, just defining them a little better. Uh, That is too much geometry. I'm gonna crank this down. Nope, that's too little. Still too little. Just to give me an initial shape to work with. That might be a little bit too small. Still too small. That might be better. Just want to get some of that moundiness where it belongs, mostly at the lip. Okay. And then an area like this, also very moundy, and then it does have some Areas where there's very visibly like a plane break. I'm gonna capture some of that here too. There's like a plane break visible there. Here also somewhat of a plane break visible. And the rest of it is something different. This looks to have a plane break here too. And this is the more interesting part. This is really thin. This has that moundy feel. Here, there's a very visible separation. And just start hinting at these forms. This has like a tubular feel to it. Not too much, there's some more over there. Definitely have to make these shapes a little bit more interesting. And this one has a whole bunch of moundy like detail. One of them extends to almost touch this piece. And it has some moundiness here. Yeah, all this is definitely subject to change. Just 
thinking about large scale information. There's a very nice triangular mounting here, which you can take advantage of. extend the same logic to these areas. Look for good plane breaks. A lot of tubular shapes. Careful, it's very easy to end up with a mechanical feel performing the same operations. Uh, but a lot of this detail is going to be shrouded in noise, but still, you want to make sure that all the underlying detail is looks organic. This is the starting of it, though. So, not too worried, though, but because worst case scenario. I have to go back and redefine all a lot of these shapes on like a lower subdivision level. I doubt that it's going to be the case. We'll see. feels very disconnected. I just bear with, you, know, you have to trust the process. We'll see that it will all come together. And then we have this. to the bun. Might have, might have been a little bit too aggressive, but it's uh, the mounting of this stuff. So a little bit of a trim dynamic on the lips to make them taper a little bit better. Because they will be blending with two puffy lips right now. I'm going to hide this extracted piece. We don't need it anymore. And bring back the original bun. Good look at it. Yeah, a part like this. It's a lot less pronounced.
make it more unified. It helps to not have any things just sitting out there as islands. looking they are really needs to look organic so use some shape design also to get better shapes not everything has to be crescent either could be some well actually in this instance yeah I do want a lot more rounder shapes there, those sharp, very little sharp shapes, a lot of crescent shapes. Help visualize, okay, that's gonna help. Okay, so, this is gonna be a good starting point for this sauce. I do have to be very careful about how much it's poking out from the bread. I'm going to try to make it as flush as possible until I'm seeing the bread geometry and then worry about I'm gonna have some of the bread geometry poking out. Okay, so I make sure I'm as close as possible to the surface of the bread. For now, I don't want it just mounding so far away from the bread. Start changing the silhouette. What? So, there we go. Stop merging all this stuff. There we go. We a lot of mounding. Okay. Yeah. It's a lot closer to the surface. I like that. flush. Okay, so I'll say that's it for um, the silhouette is really close to the final. So in the next lesson, I'm going to start going through, well, not start, but continue this primary form fleshing out phase. So I'm gonna go in and flesh out all the primary forms for the patties, the cheese, the cucumbers, the top bun. I'm going to take all the primary forms to as close to the finished result as possible. And that's what I'm gonna spend the, the next few lessons trying to do. Well, not the next few lessons, this should take about maybe two to one lesson to get all these primary forms sorted out. And then from there, We'll move on to the secondary forms, which is a really um, technique packed process, getting those secondary forms in there. But I'm really looking forward to getting these forms of this patty in there. There's some 
interesting crescent shapes at the bottom and then the top that's charred has a lot smaller shapes in there which will benefit for some from some noise operations mixed with some nano mesh technique that i'm considering so yeah this is it for for this lesson next lesson i'll continue with these primary forms hopefully maybe finish these primary forms for everything in the next lesson